Hi guys, it's Hannah and welcome to or welcome back to the Isopod Source channel. Today we are going to be covering the best 10 beginner isopods. Basically, it is my interpretation of the 10 best beginner isopods. If I had known back then when I started two years ago with isopods what I knew now, this is what I would want to know and this is what I would have wanted for someone to recommend to me because I am a little bit of a particular person. I like particular colors. I like particular patterns in comparison to others. So knowing this would have helped me a lot back then to collect all the species I want for my collection that I finally have now. So these are my 10 beginner isopods. So the two main criteria that we are looking at here is their hardiness and the ability to appeal to my senses meaning I like how they look, I like their temperament as a species. Every single one of these species will have the same basic substrate. The same basic substrate that consists of organic potting soil, something to keep in moisture like peat moss, sphagnum moss. This substrate will also absolutely have tons of leaf litter. So hardiness entails being able to survive in a large range of temperatures, temperatures from 40 degrees all the way up to 80 or 90 degrees. If you have spikes of those, these isopods will not die. These neat isopods need to withstand a mild range of humidity. So granted, they are given basic ventilation and basic ventilation pretty much to me just means a loose fitting lid, meaning something like this. If you're able to open with your hands and you see an air hole, that's considered a loose fitting lid. So given basic ventilation, they can handle a wide range of humidity. So these isopods can go over a week without being misted. The next thing is preference to food. Some prefer vegetation, while others will be really protein hungry. And what we are looking for is an isopod that will eat anything on the menu. So whatever you give them is going to be gone within the next two to three days. We are also looking for this species to mature fast and have large broods, meaning that you are going to see babies from these isopods, given that they are sexually mature, one to three months. So essentially what I'm saying is that all of the care for these isopods need to be basic. and what I mean by basic is basic substrate, basic temperature, which is room temperature, and withstanding anywhere from 50 to 80 degrees in Fahrenheit. Humidity, basic humidity, they can handle anywhere from 30 to 90% humidity. Basic diet, meaning they eat everything that is offered. They have a fast reproduction rate and large broods. And they're not boring to look at, at least for me, because these are, after all, my top 10. So coming in at number 10 is Armadillidium nasatum peach and these isopods get the number 10 spot for a lot of reasons. Armadillidium nasatum were one of my favorite isopods starting out because they were some that I collected from a wild culture. So Armadillidium nasatum cover pretty much all of the bases. I've been able to find them in places that are almost in direct sunlight and super dry and super hot. I've also been able to find them in the middle of the fall, which is pretty cold here in New England. I've been able to find them in 45 degree weather in my backyard. Armadillidium nasatum will eat anything. They are not picky eaters at all. They mature very fast and they have pretty large broods even though they are a smaller isopod, broods of 10 all the way up to 20. And the reason I specifically picked Armadillidium nasatum peach was because this color appealed to me and they all shoot out. Even the normal ones are extremely interesting to keep because you see all kinds of different variations of colors from light to dark. They are super polymorphic and amusing to keep. So, not so surprisingly, numbers eight and nine are Porcelio Lavis. Now, these guys were obviously expected to be on the list, I'm sure, by most people. And they are on the list for exactly those reasons, for being one of the most prolific and largest isopods that you can get. Obviously, there are larger isopods that are a little bit more advanced, whether they're moderate or more advanced but these are one of the best choices for beginner isopods. Porcelio lavis dairy cows coming in at number nine because of all those things that I just said and their cool colors. Every single one comes out different and who doesn't want to see crazy black spots on a white isopod? They 
fit into all of the categories. They are able to withstand cool temperatures, extremely warm temperatures, all different kinds of humidity. You're able to use them in certain snake enclosures as cleanup crews. They work incredible as a feeder isopod. And milkback have an extremely creamy, almost granite-like color on their back and it comes out different almost every single time. There are no two that are alike. The other thing about them is their size. I, there are other variations of Porcelio labis, like the orange and the original wild type color, and those are not nearly as amusing as these other two variations that I have loved keeping myself. So coming in at number seven, we have Armadillidium maculatum, which is a classic for most, something that most people begin with. Believe it or not, I personally had a lot of trouble with them. I don't know if I got a cursed culture about two years ago or if they were all males, but it took me about five times to buy Armadillidium maculatum until I finally got them producing. And all I equated that to was not a good enclosure or not good enough substrate. And once I got them locked in, they produced nonstop. Armadillidium maculatum cover all the bases. They were some of the easiest species to feed as they'll feed on scraps of any vegetable. Although I didn't have a lot of luck with the species and it took me a while to actually start to like them, they still make the list because of their colors, their classic look, and their size. So these guys right here are Armadillidium granulatum and Armadillidium granulatum made number six on my list because they are one of my favorite ice pods and were from the very beginning. They are quite underrated. I personally love them and I breed them for size in, in particular. A lot of people breed high yellow uh, granulatum. They are a very easy, very hardy beginner species that that I would say even likes it on the drier side, just like any armadillidium species as well as the maculatum that I mentioned previously. They enjoy warm temperatures, but they can tolerate it very dry as well. So this is another species that you guys were probably expecting, a very easy to keep species that can be kept in bone dry conditions that will survive through almost anything and that is going to be Porcelio scaber and these guys as you know come in tons of color variations so just to name a few mutations of Porcelio scaber I only wrote down a list of stuff that we keep or have kept in the past and this is what I have so far Lemonade, pie bald, orange, calico, lottery ticket, white, orange, Spanish, orange, red, calico, Dalmatian, orange, Dalmatian, orange, koi, koi. And the two that I'm going to be talking to you guys about today, which are orange ember and lava. Now, orange ember comes in number five and lava comes in number four in their ranking simply because in our experience, our lava isopod babies, tend to grow a lot slower for some reason than the other scaber but they're way more rewarding because they're actually bigger in size and their coloration is unlike anything else. Now don't get me wrong there are a lot of Porcelio scaber species that are orange we have or that have orange in them. We have orange, giant orange, orange dalmatian, orange koi. Orange ember are my favorite because they have a really unique color. These guys have a beautiful little translucent skirt and a very light orange color. These guys are very active. They get pretty large or as large as any scaber is gonna get and they reproduce extremely fast. Poor Celio scaber are extremely resilient. They will eat absolutely anything that you give them. They mature fast, they reproduce fast, and these guys are, in my opinion, my personal favorite colors. Of course, there's about 20 or so, if not more, to choose from, but since this is my list and my video and my top 10 beginner isopods, these are the two that I would have wanted to see back when I was starting in the beginning. And instead of buying all of these other species, these are the two that, that I would have gravitated towards most if I was to see pictures. 
Coming in at number three is another Armadillidium species. I tend to favor Armadillidium species simply because of how they look. I am obsessed with Armadillidium front rostrae, and I was from the absolute beginning, the first time I saw them, because of their size. These guys are colossal isopods. These are a very large isopod that will definitely produce large broods for you. They are pretty moderately fast maturing and they can handle a lot of different temperature ranges. The reason Armadillidium frontrostrae made the list is because I find them to be an incredible beginner isopod. They really stand out to me because of their size and they do fit into all of the categories that we are evaluating them on. So we are down to number two and number two is something that is probably going to be very underwhelming for most of you and possibly disappointing, believe it or not. My number two beginner isopod are these P. pruinosis, but not just P. pruinosis, P. pruinosis whiteout. Now these guys are absolutely insane. They run so fast at any sign of light. There are so many of them. They are the coolest isopods to watch. They reproduce just like, for, just like P. pruinosis of any other color, orange or blue and they are the absolute coolest. Everyone knows that these are one of the best uh, cleanup crew species as they'll demolish anything that comes their way. They reproduce extremely fast and they have large broods. These are anyone's best friend for beginner isopods, but if you don't wanna go for something as basic as the blue or the orange, these are the next best thing. My favorite thing is feeding them something of a different color, whether it's a fish pellet or a vegetable that day, and you will see it inside of them just like you would on a shrimp uh, going out the other end, and they are the coolest ones to watch in my opinion because they are so active and actually a little bit more sensitive to light than other pruinosis. Those are my second favorite. So now we have number one, and it's not far off. It's not far off from the white pruinosis. It is the Oreo crumble pruinosis. And I have been going absolutely nuts for these guys as soon as I got them, which was about two months ago. I was finally able to purchase some. I don't know how I didn't know about them before and how I didn't have them sooner, but they are my favorite thing. They're the first thing I observe whenever I go down into the isopod room. They are just remarkable in their coloring. And because I know I already love the personality of Prunosis, I just love these guys that much more. They seem to get a little bit bulkier than the average Prunosis. And in case you can't tell, they kind of resemble Porcelio Lavis Milkback with their pattern, except these guys have a black pattern, whereas the Milkback have a white pattern. And these guys are just the coolest thing. P. Prunosis, Oreo Crumble. Obviously, they fit all of the basic needs. They'll survive through anything. These guys made my number one. They made my number one because of their colors and how irresistible that makes them. Thank you guys for watching this time around. Make sure to like and subscribe. Watch the other care videos that we have right now on Barber Douglas and Expanses. Thank you for watching my top 10 beginner isopods and I'll see you next time.